beyond the the cold calculated models of nuclear winter what would people see if you, they were walking through a world that a nu- where a nuclear winter was going on with their senses what what would the what would the sky look like would would the air smell different like I, I was just wondering from a from a sensory standpoint what do you imagine a nuclear winter to feel like if you were to make that into a model of augmented reality that people could actually experience sure um well you can see this now if you're in a place where smoke from large remote fires come over you you know, so around in Colorado, for example, we've had several years with fires in the West blanketing us with smoke. You know, sometimes it's you can smell it because it's a low altitude, um, but usually it's high above us, and so you just see it as a a gray haze. So it makes the it makes the mm-hmm. atmosphere look gray and washed out. Um, you know, and the the fires after a nuclear winter are only going to last you know, weeks or something like that for a short period mm-hmm. of time. And so the smoke at low levels is going to go away. And of course, there's all kinds of nasty pyrotoxins in the smoke. And lots of people get sick from the smoke from burning cities and this plastic, burning plastics and stuff is, stuff mm-hmm. is deadly. Um, so a lot of people actually get sick from the smoke. Um, but nevertheless, after a while, it would, it would just make the skies would just look gray and it would feel like a heavily overcast day at the surface. You know, there wouldn't be distinct sun, bright sun, and mm. sh- shadows would be washed out. Uh, and it'd be, and it would be cold. It would, you know, the temperatures would drop below freezing. There'd be snow on the ground, and the snow on the ground probably wouldn't go away for a couple of years. So every time you walk mm. outside, I mean, the temperatures we're talking about here are colder than the last ice age. Uh, you know, so it, it would be miserable temperature wise, you know, so I used to draw this analogy, what would happen if there was a asteroid impact now or a nuclear conflict? Yeah. And, uh, you know, if you, if we're, let's take the asteroid example here, cause it's a little less damaging locally. If there was an asteroid impact, you could run into a parking garage or something like that. Yeah. You can't see the sky. So then you, you the fire. That's, that's the, funny. That's funny to hear an, an asteroid as the second worst option. Yeah, right. Well, if there was a nuclear war, probably the person who had yeah. <laughs> dropped down your head. Yeah. At any rate, you want to get away from the from the original blast or bright glowing sky from fires or whatever it is. And okay, so you're you're in this parking garage and you've protected yourself, and um, you know you waited there for a few days or whatever it is. So there was. The radiation didn't kill you. Um, okay, but, you know, you go outside and uh, there's no power anymore. You know, there's no electricity. Uh, you know, there's uh, no gasoline to be had. There's uh, no fuel to, you know, power your furnace. The temperatures are dropping. You know, the temperatures drop every night. So it's not like it's a mystery. You shut off the sun, the temperatures drop. Mm-hmm. You know, just get colder and colder. And... Um, you know, so you you can't call mom and ask her what to do because the phones don't work. Um, there's mm-hmm. nobody bringing food to where you are. Um, there's a lot of people that are hurt around you and um, probably a lot of wounded animals. Uh, there's lots of debris left over from burning everything. You know, so it, it would feel, you know, really dirty and miserable. You know, you couldn't go take a shower and anything like that because there wouldn't be hot water probably any water pressure because there's no electricity to run the pumps. Um, so, you know, you'd be in a really difficult situation of just trying to find some clean water, some, something to eat, mm. uh, something to keep yourself warm. Uh, you know, so those are, you know, you'd be immediately thrust into a survival situation pretty much mm. by yourself, probably, where it'd be hard to find other people, uh, you know, depending on with you, maybe you live with friends, you all survive together or yeah. something and you work as a band, you know, but nevertheless, there's going to be a lot of other people out there looking for food and there's not going to be any food. Uh, you know, this is one of the things like the numbers I told you from the number of people who died, that was kind of optimistic because it, it takes a certain number of calories for people to eat just to maintain bodily functions. Mm. And so if you have the minimum number of calories, 
given to some people and everybody else gets nothing. So some people get nothing and everybody else gets just enough to survive. Then you end up yeah. with 5 billion people dead and a billion and a half left or something. However, Jesus. those people who don't get anything are probably not going to like that. Um, you know, maybe yeah. they're dead from the nuclear war, but more likely they're going to come and try to take your calories. And then mm -hmm. you're all going to be on subs, you know, not enough calories to live. So there's going to be huge battles over food and, um, and every other resource you need. You know, the people who are not in a combat zone would be best better off. Um, you know, New Zealand, for example, you know, is far away from the combat zone. It'd still be uh, dark mm -hmm. there. Uh, they still lose a lot of sunlight. Uh, but if you live in New Zealand, you know, most of you grow sheep and the sheep eat grass. Um, you know, you wouldn't kill all the grass. So you could probably keep enough sheep there to, you know, they export most of the sheep. And so you probably could mm -hmm. continue to grow enough sheep to eat. So there might be some little pockets around the world where there's still enough food to eat. But in New Zealand, you know, they don't have big industries to make things. So pretty soon their mm. generators would fail. They wouldn't be able to make electricity. They wouldn't be able to import fuel. Um, you know, they, they, they'd lose all the things that depended on technology. Mm. You know, and so they'd still be forced back into a primitive agricultural existence. Hey guys, this is a quick reminder to check out Auxoro Premium, the best deal in premium podcasting. On Auxoro Premium, you gain access to bonus episodes, the unlicensed therapy series, the ability to submit topic suggestions for the podcast, exclusive Ask Me Anything episodes, and the entire premium catalog for only five bucks per month. Go to auxoro.supercast.com, that's A-U-X-O-R-O.supercast.com to join the premium gang today.